Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Not So Much Wood Stove Wednesday Wednesday. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because we're stuck in town. The winds are way crazy right now out on the passage, so um, we had to spend an extra two days in town. We should be able to get back to the cabin tomorrow, but we wanted to be able to film this and get it published for next week, and so here we are. This wood stove Wednesday, not so much wood stove Wednesday, <laughs> is going to be over the us floating the boat trailer over. Because we got a lot of questions about that. We're going to sum that up. And yeah, so these this is going to be our second uh, Wood Stove Wednesday that we did. So let us know if you're liking them. And let's let's get to it. Why did we float the trailer over? Because of the high winds. It, because of what's happening right now. So in the passage that our island's on, uh, the winds can get up to just two weeks ago it was 70 miles an hour and we didn't want our boat just flapping out there in the wind even though we park our boat on the side of the island not out in the main channel um it still gets windy back there and in the winter time they have what they call freezing spray i couldn't mm. think of it yeah. and so what that is is as your boat when the when it's going up and down as soon as the wave crashes on it the water you know you get that mist that goes onto the water onto your boat and then as soon as it hits it freezes so eventually it starts getting heavier and heavier and heavier and it can start to go to one side and then it starts doing this and then eventually it'll take water over the the bow or one of the sides or the stern and then bloop, 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 bloop. there goes your boat there goes your boat so that's the main reason why we brought the trailer over there is just for wintertime weather. In the summertime, the, the, the winds are pretty calm, characteristically. So it's pretty safe on the outhaul. It's pretty safe on the outhaul. But in the wintertime, we, the winds pick up crazy and it gets below freezing. And that's a recipe for disaster. So that's why we brought the trailer over. Uh, yeah. The truth is, Brian got tired of me waking him up in the middle of the night to go check if the boat was still there. Yeah, I did. And I, then she'd be like, let's go check the boat. And I'd say, you don't want to go look at that boat. <laughs> that boat's scary to look at. You don't even want to go out there. Uh, at the end of these videos, we're going to pick one question from that particular topic. And that's going to be our subscriber of the week. And so we will get to that guy later. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. It, is the trailer going to rust? Everything rusts. <laughs> that is true. I mean, you just get ocean spray, and so everything's going to rust. But the trailer itself, even if it wasn't at the island, it goes down into the water and out of the water every time a boat gets launched on and off the trailer. The trailer gets completely submerged and in, in back and forth. So. Is the boat going to rust? If not anymore, well, Trailer. I don't want to say not anymore so because it's going to be constantly getting spray on it. But uh, long, to long story short is the trailer is galvanized. Um, so is it going to rust? Eventually everything's going to rust, but uh, not. it's not going to rust like super fast, no. It's not, yeah, it's, because it's galvanized, it's, it's pretty, it's rust resistant. Do we have two trailers? Yes. We do have two trailers. The trailer that we floated over to the island is the trailer that, that came with the boat. That trailer was made specifically for that boat. And why we chose to float that trailer over was because um, when the wind's blowing, here's the trailer, here's our boat when the wind's blowing, and we want to get the boat on the trailer, we don't want to be fighting with the trailer that's not made for this boat so we want to be able to just go whoop and then try to get it on as fast as possible and get it up the beach uh so that's why we brought that trailer over that trailer is a much better trailer than the trailer that we bought and that is in town now but we didn't want the hassle of extra the, length yeah so we didn't want the hassle of of um messing with that in 
in a storm trying to get the boat on or off the trailer so we brought the best trailer over that was fitted specifically for that boat and that's what we did mm -hmm. so the trailer that we bought uh, is for a 20 20 to 22 foot boat so we had to do uh, some adjusting on it we did one video of us um, rewiring. rewiring the lights on it there's another video that we haven't published because nobody likes our boat videos mm -hmm. but there's another video we did where we uh, moved the the winch post back because the the um, bunkers that they slide on the sliders that the boat actually sits on those we're hitting our transducer. Yeah, we're hitting the little um, depth finders, the little transducers, and popping them, popping them up. So we had to slide it back so that the boats, the boat and the and the posts were actually flush like this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Sometimes I start talking and I don't make sense. So, <laughs> so why did we choose to float it, and what were the other options? Go he, ahead, tell him. Tell he, him the truth. He really wanted to float it over. I really wanted to hire a landing craft and bring it over. I really wanted to save money. <laughs> I really wanted to be safe. <laughs> so with safety comes dollars. Uh, so we could have rented a landing craft for between 800 to to 1000 bucks, And all a landing craft is is a, a boat big enough that we could have put that trailer onto. And it's got... Instead of a bow, like a V bow, it's got a square bow and a, and a door. So it goes up on the beach, the door opens up, and then you can take stuff on and off. Um, kind of like um, if you watch those old World War II movies, landing crafts. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. Um, so for 800 to 1000 bucks, we could have done that and hired a landing craft. Or for 1200 to 2000 bucks, we could have hired a, a helicopter to sling load it and just pick it up and and then set it down but uh, for a uh, hundred yards of rope that we had already and fifteen dollars of gasoline it was a pretty easy so we ourselves have heard a lot of people who have float their own trailers over but we hadn't seen it ourselves either so I was a little nervous about it I wasn't nervous at all he wasn't. I mean it's nerve-wracking because it's your boat we have our boat insured but just like once, anything else. <laughs> once that boat goes down to the water, it could have just went bloop and flopped over on its side and sank right there. And then we'd have been screwed. I mean, we could have drug it out of the water and, and got it off the trailer and flopped it back up, pumped, did some pumping. But it's just, it's a little, it was a little nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. I was nervous, but everything worked out fine. Stephen was a great, uh, a great help because he had done it before. And, um, and he had no nerves whatsoever. He's like, we can totally do this. And I was like, you guys this. totally can. I'll stay home. <laughs> <laughs> is Gunner okay? Is, is Gunner okay? <laughs> Gunner's okay. Uh, if you look in the video, Gunner, <laughs> when we're approaching the beach with the trailer, Gunner starts to swim out to the trailer and he takes a direct hit. <laughs> to the chest with the trailer tongue and uh, then it kind of gets trapped a little you know, after <laughs> I reanalyzed it because he's a big dummy. You're a big dummy. No, he's just a big baby. He, he was, wants his daddy. Yes, he just wanted his daddy. So when he saw me, he was like, I'm coming. Yeah, because I'd been gone. It took us, uh, it took us about two hours uh, because we could only go about four miles an hour, five miles an hour with that trailer on. Um, so normally we can cruise between 22 and 25 miles an hour or knots, um, but with the trailer on, we can only go four to five knots. And it was a constant back and forth because once once I steered this way, the, the trailer started to take and then I'd have to re... There was no going straight. It was just back and forth the whole, the whole time. So yeah. if you want to know how the voyage went, uh, my arms were tired because I, <laughs> I literally just did this for two hours back and forth. But it was a beautiful sunny day. Oh, it, was, it was gorgeous in the, the water was flat calm, flat calm. Uh, but gunner is okay um he's he loves his daddy <laughs> and i'm his daddy so um he he did take a uh, a tongue to the chest but uh he was just fine he didn't he didn't care 
Uh, but we will tell you a story about how I lost my iPhone. Oh, yeah, just because Gunner needed his daddy. <laughs> so it was a windy day and we didn't have a trailer. So in in our um, where our boat hall is, there's what you call a spit. So if this is, I don't know how I could do it. Ooh, look at that. If this is the island and then there's a big like sandbar that comes out, uh, I don't know, 175 yards and that's a spit. So basically you can walk out on that at low tide about 75 yards and then high tide, super high tide, you can probably walk out 10 yards. But um, the spit blocks the wind so if the wind's blowing from the east obviously the the west side of the spit is calm and if it's blowing from the west vice versa so the wind was blowing from the east so we dropped all of our supplies off on the west side of the of the spit <laughs> and the t t two dogs this is before luca died um so we had luca and gunner <laughs> um and so we dropped all our supplies and the dogs and then me and her got in the boat and started just to go around the spit because that's where our outhaul was. And so... So we just thought Gunner would run... Yeah, run just hang out and just run on the beach. Which you didn't mention that we were also, what was it, four foot seas out there? Five, the yeah, five foot seas. So the seas were rough and it was blowing hard. So <laughs> we get we get around the spit and here comes Gunner and... Running down the spit. And Luca. <laughs> And so Gunner runs, and there's like a hundred seagulls just on the spit. And so all these seagulls are flying away. And then and then Gunner gets to the end of the spit, and he just jumps in the water. <laughs> he starts swimming out to us, and all I could see was I'd see my dog's head, and then it'd disappear. And I'd see his head, and I'd, it'd disappear. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God, my dog's going to die. <laughs> Let me turn the boat around. So I, I whipped the boat around. And uh, I... That was before we got his little nifty life jacket. Life jacket. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we put him in a life jacket, because he's silly. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, she takes control of the wheel, and I go get on the side of the boat. And um, I reach over to pick up Gunner, and while I'm picking him up, I had my iPhone in my breast pocket, and it goes shoop bloop into the water. <laughs> And that was it. I never seen that iPhone again. Thank God for insurance. <laughs> but I got my dog, so I guess. Which was not easy to pull no, him no, in. So yeah. that's why we also put him in that life jacket. It's much easier. He's just easier. got a handle. Yeah, I mean, I had to like just grab him by his scruff, and he's a 60-pound dog. So <sighs> he might not look heavy, but he's 60 pounds. <laughs> well, yeah, especially when you're fighting the waves at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, <laughs> Our other so then, then we got Gunner on the boat. And our other little Italian greyhound, Luca, uh, God rest his soul, <laughs> he's just sitting on the beach just going, ah, ah, ah. and so we even go, like we go and, and beach the boat, like we're at the outhaul getting ready to tie up and everything. He's still staying, he's still staying at the spit. The end of the spit. He's just going, ah, <laughs> like I don't know what to do, what's going, <laughs> what's I, going I on? I think Luca, we sent, I mean we sent Gunner finally down to go get him. My world's upside down. <laughs> Poor Luca. He was so not an Alaskan dog. <laughs> no. We got Luca in Colorado. And Colorado gets cold, but not as cold as Alaska. So yeah, he was not meant. He was not meant for the island life, but the island life chose him. <laughs> so it is what it is. Yep. So I had a question and I'm not. I'm not, uh, I get a lot of questions. This isn't the first time, but people ask us why we don't build a dock. And the reason why we don't build a dock is, is because think of a football field, because that's how much tide comes in and out every single day. So what is it, every six hours, hmm. a tide would come in, six hours it would go out. So if I wanted to build a dock that where my boat could float like all the time, it'd have to be over a hundred yards, a football field. And that's just not feasible. I mean, that's a lot of material for one. Uh, you could float it, but here's the problem with trying to float it. It would be the wintertime. The wintertime would just destroy that thing. Yeah. I mean, it would just be gone. It wouldn't, there would be nothing that could hold that in place. There is a, um, a salmon lodge on another island, and, and it is a professionally made, like they spent, how much do they cost to put a piling in? I think one piling is like $16,000 to put a big piling in. 
and it's probably got 10 pilings. But they disassemble that whole thing and just leave the pilings. They at the end of the season. Yeah, at the end of the, end of the season. Yeah, the end of the summer season, the tourists are all gone and uh, late September, they close it down. They they actually come and disassemble everything, and they take boats and float the the um, the dock the dock back over to the mainland because it just gets too rough here. I tell when I make movies, when I make movies, they're not really movies, they're videos. So when I make videos, um, I try to tell a story. But when I'm telling a story, I try people's attention spans aren't aren't like. Like, it's either you either stay focused or you, or you people leave. So I try to cut out all the little tiny things. So like if you watch a guy and he goes into the bathroom to use the bathroom and then and then he comes back out and you're like, well, how did he put his pants on? <laughs> he didn't show him put his pants on. So I don't show everything that happens. And I get a lot of questions and I don't mind the questions, but... Um, if I showed every every little tiny detail of something, then it'd just be too long and too boring. So I cut out the little tiny fluff and try to stick to the meats and potatoes while telling a story. Um, but sometimes I don't think of things, and so I appreciate the comments because oh, Sasquatch is out there because. Um, Sometimes we don't think about it or we don't know about it. And then we're like, oh, thank you. I didn't think about that. But um, like when we we published a video last year about when we got that little, I, um, that what do they call them? ICP or something. Those little, well, the little clear totes. Um, I, I got it all put together. And, but what I didn't show was that we spray painted it black and that cut when we covered it with the tarp. Mm. But I had like 18 questions saying, that's going to grow algae in your water. But we we thought about it. Thank you. But thank you for keeping us honest because, but like I said, if I, if I put every single little tiny part in the video, then people would be like, oh, boring. <laughs> Next video. How, how's the, how's. How's getting the boat out of the water coming along? <laughs> it's kind of coming along. It's kind of coming along. Um, we've got we've got ideas. I mean, we get it out of the water. It's just a little time consuming. I think we would like to get maybe a larger winch and definitely get some new winch cable to put on that winch or the new winch. But uh, I'd also like to get, I've got one snatch block and maybe get a, a second snatch block so we can run like uh, a line from the, from the four wheeler to a tree and then back to the, to the four wheeler so we can be pulling and maybe be even back again. I don't know. Yeah, because I'm afraid the way we're doing it now, it's really going to make our four wheeler end up going kaput. Yeah, so we don't want to like stress the four wheeler out too much, but yeah. we do need to get and, and to be honest with that come along, it's just slow going. I mean, it gets it out of the water. It's you only but you only get like five foot, and then you got to stop and string it back out and start wrenching again. So not that I'm complaining. I love it out of the water. Yeah, I mean, if we have to spend thirty minutes to get our boat out of the water, it's it's much better than the other option which is having the boat in the water and worrying about it all night long yeah for sure for sure <laughs> so in that trailer video we also um the bear visited us i don't know if anybody even realized that what well, that's what was swimming in the water but that was the brown bear that's over at our island and um no we haven't uh we haven't once I shot the gun, that was the last time. No, 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 no. That's last. not the last he time. He actually came to visit us at our at our outhole yeah. <laughs> at the trailer. So we we were going, we were coming back, and um, there he was, like right by our trailer. And she said, um, "Hey, isn't that a bear over there?" And I was like, I was driving, so I was like, I don't, I don't have time to look at that. I was like, I don't think so. It ain't moving. <laughs> like a minute later. She goes, I know it's moving now. 
so we 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 changed spots so and then i jumped up on the bow and um started slapping the the bow line on the bow and making a lot of noise and finally he was like okay i'm gonna leave and yeah very slowly he knows, you know? <laughs> so. but then we had to leash gunner up because gunner likes to Take. press his luck <laughs> with whatever yep yep is there anything else you want to talk about i don't think so you did a good job babe i'm glad you got it over <laughs> um so we're trying to keep this one short last week's last week's wood stove wednesday were like 30 minutes long that was too long we had a lot to talk about that's a lot to talk about with bears yeah a lot there's always a lot of stories with bears that's for sure yeah that's the <laughs> truth <laughs> well if you like this video give us a thumbs up <laughs> let's uh Let's do our drawing and find out who are. Let's do the, what are we going to call it, the drawing? Let's do drawing. our drawing. Drawing? You're gonna... well, it's like a little raffle. You put you put the video in and click a button and it circles through and gives you like a winner. Does it? Yeah. That's nifty. It is kind of nifty. All right, so we picked a comment of the week and it goes to... Drum roll, Mama. JCHD. What is it? Surprise! <laughs> he says, get yourself a BB winch and make yourself a trolley system. That should help get up, get you up into the trees and out of the wind, but cover your boat or it will be full of spruce needles. Good luck on your, good luck. You're on the right track mm. making a pull out. All about the pull-out method. <laughs> I can't take her anywhere. I can't take her anywhere. This is a PG rated, PG thirteen, strongly PG thirteen rated show. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we're we're working it out. We're working it out. That's all. We'll I work out say. the kinks. That's what I keep saying. So if you want to one day be the commenter of the week you got a comment we might start doing them on every video we don't know but we're gonna at least start doing them on wood stove wednesday and hopefully we'll get in front of the wood stove next week <laughs> we will i promise even if you have to ride those high seats the, the problem with getting in front of the wood stove is sometimes you just start <laughs> sweating like oh my gosh it's so it's so hot yeah, what you don't know is I have a shirt on, but I know I have pants on when we're videotaping. Too hot? Hot damn. Fried up in the frying pan. Too hot? Hot damn. Girl, I say hallelujah. Ooh. Girl, I say hallelujah. Ooh. Girl, I say hallelujah. Up top, up, up, go give it to you. Oh, gosh. See you next week. Bye.